most important things uh, that happens in this training facility is right, right here behind us on these taping tables, a way to keep players safe, uh, protect injuries, or even prevent injuries. Uh, players sit right here on these tables and get taped up before practices and games, right? That's exactly right. Uh, that We probably didn't talk about the most, one of the three most important aspects here is prevent injuries, uh, treat them, and then get them rehabbed so they can go again. Now this is the taping station here. And from about 1 o'clock to 2.15 every day that we're practicing, it will be full. Our trainers uh, will be going strong, taping ankles, taping knees, taping hands, all those kind of things. Uh, you obviously can see here behind us the uh, doors of tape and all the uh, different aspects of uh, uh, treatment, or not treatment, but prevention that they can put with the uh, various things that uh, hopefully help stabilize maybe a, a knee that's bothered or and again just like most alignment they like to take their wrists and hands because right. uh, usually that's where you get a jam finger or a sprained wrist or something now right out this door that's caught my attention is the bcs championship trophy and really that's ultimately what the goal is every season yeah and this all plays a role in it because you got to have healthy players to, to get that trophy right yeah we've proven that when you don't have you don't play quite as well i think everybody would uh I would tell you that, and certainly that's as you walk out of this training room, that, uh, that is a nice reminder. All right, so i got to be honest with you. This is my favorite part of the tour. I mean, this is we're inside the OU football locker room. Uh, you can see behind me, uh, Coach, this was a re newly renovated, redone locker room, what, two years ago, 2010? 2010. Okay, so um, players have access to come in here. There's, there's, uh, there's, there's chairs, there's televisions all around. Uh, they come in maybe in between classes or uh, after workouts and have just a chance to just uh, – cool off and relax before going back to school? They do. It gives them kind of a uh, place to congregate a little bit before and after practice, uh, spend a little extra time here with each other, which is really important when they can do that. And then more importantly, uh, other than our freshmen, most of our uh, football players, uh, most of our student athletes actually uh, live off campus. And if they commute to campus and park their car across the street and go to class, uh, an hour or two, they may have an hour or two break. Okay. And rather than go over to the noisy student union or whatever, they can come by here, take a nap, watch TV, study a little bit, and uh, wind down. And it's, it's given them uh, a lot more than just a nice place to get ready to go to practice. Mm -hmm. Now, for fans who uh, come to the games, or obviously you, know, you, you have the, like, the, the uh, opportunity to be there firsthand, they know that the infamous video that starts uh, right before kickoff as the team's taking the field, and that actually starts right here. I mean, this, these doors just behind us are the doors they come out and go from this room directly to the field, right? They do. They do. Uh, the, uh, of course, they've got a, a, a kind of an inspirational, motivational uh, video that's done in a team uh, meeting room. But uh, basically, they catch them on the camera as they leave the dressing room and go down through the tunnel to the field. And they also have direct access to the practice uh, fields just behind us over here as well, right? Right, to your right, actually. Oh, to my right. Sorry, that, to, way. Yes, uh -huh. that way. Okay, so check us out. Left and right side are these uh, cool water pools. Cold water. Cold water pools, and that's, is, that's, that's worse than cool, cold, right? <laughs> yes. Um, and so each side, you've got these pools, and you're telling me the players can come in after a weight training exercise uh, workout or August afternoons working out in the sun. Just okay. behind, now I can say behind us are the practice fields. So they come in here and they can hit these pools and kind of cool down their, their core body temperature, right? Yes, and uh, they get to where that's important to them too. It's not that you have to tell them it's mandatory or anything else. They do it because they makes them feel a lot better, especially your legs, I think. And uh, after any kind of a weight workout, uh, a high percentage of the guys will be in here uh, chilling out a little bit. Uh, certainly at August and September practice, and even later, some of them do. Some of them make it a ritual. They come in here every day. Mm -hmm. Now, about how long do they stay in, in the water? Not long, I don't think. I, I'd stay in that cold water too long. I, I would say 10 minutes, maybe. Not okay. too long. So, again, what you see is uh, you, you see the method behind what's on the field on Saturdays. All the preparation, all the teamwork, uh, everything to physically prepare. But, Coach, there's one more aspect. They've got to go actually to a film room and sit down and, and study game film and have team meetings. And that's done in this facility as well, right? That's right, there's a lot of it mental, not just physical. This is the meeting room. This is where the team meets. Um, if, we, if you got to see the all access uh, feature that ESPN did uh, last August, this is the room where Bob Stoops addresses the team when they first come to camp. When the team is all together, it's, it's set up like this in a big theater type setting. But you were just telling me that there's a wall that comes down that's a soundproof wall 
and they divide this room offense and defense for preparation, right? Yes. If they want to uh, meet as a unit offensively and defensively, they will come in here and uh, the offense has the side to our back and the uh, defense has the side over here to our right. They'll lower that soundproof wall and they can meet at the same time. Now upstairs on the second floor, we've got eight smaller rooms where they break down before practice uh, with their position coach. And all the video equipment is in here, feeds out here to who's conducting the meeting. A screen is on our left over here and uh, away we go. All right. Coach, I want to thank you so much for your time, spending time with us today and showing us around. There's one more room I want to look at before uh, before we get out of here, and that's the upstairs room where the uh, you call it the Legends Room. Is that right? Can, uh, Legends Lobby. Yeah, the Legends yeah. Lobby. Talk, yeah. talk just a little yeah. bit about the significance of that room. Well, it's a uh, football museum, if you will. Uh, it was uh, added back in 1997 and 98, right before Coach Stoops got here, in fact. And uh, essentially depicts a lot of the great history that this school has enjoyed. Uh, the entry has a uh, painting there of a lot of the great players and coaches that have been here. You go to the second floor, it's for team achievement, championships, bowl games, those kind of things. Up on the third floor, we've got individual achievements, uh, Heisman trophies, uh, uh, a good bit about those guys, all conference, all American mm -hmm. players, school records, all those kind of things. And this school has uh, got some special tradition, especially in the modern era of college football since World War II. Uh, the Sooners have won over 30 more games than any right. of the other 119 Division I teams in that period of time. And we can go on and on and on. And it's on display over there. And uh, we certainly welcome people to come by and see it. Well, we're excited to take a look at it. But i got to ask one more thing with you. Um, you know, my kids know you from the radio. You work with Toby Rowland, the voice of the oh, Sooners. Yeah. But your, your career at Oklahoma is so much more than that. Uh, coaching career, director of football operations. How many consecutive OU football games have you attended now? Do you know? 408 now. 408 consecutive OU Everyone football games. Everyone since I've been here. Wow. I had, had, hadn't had to buy a ticket yet. I haven't had to buy a ticket. <laughs> but hey, when you're winning national championships, that's one of the perks, right? Coach, that's again, exactly thank you right. for your time. We appreciate you spending some uh, the afternoon with us. You're more than welcome. Thank you. Hey guys, so behind me is the trophy case for the 2000 season. Bob Stoops' uh, second season as the head coach for the University of Oklahoma. Obviously, it was a national championship uh, season for OU. Uh, Bob Stoops won his first of seven uh, Big 12 championships that year as well. And you got everything in the trophy case from the Sears Championship trophy to the Big 12 Championship trophy to the Orange Bowl trophy to a special football um, commemorating the Florida State OU game. This is what it's about. What we see on the field on Saturdays, uh, this is what we gun for every year as the University of Oklahoma. This is something that a lot of fans don't get to see inside this room where the, the, the championship and the team achievements are all awarded. Uh, but uh, it's a really a neat experience to be able to be in here and to see the nostalgia of the OU football tradition, uh, the conference championships and so forth. And right above me is uh, where the individual achievements are. And so we're gonna go take a sneak peek at uh, maybe Sam Bradford's Heisman Trophy. What do you think? So here it is, guys, Sam Bradford's Heisman Trophy. Um, right over there, you've got Jason White's Heisman Trophy. We've also got uh, Billy Vessels behind me, uh, Steve Owens and Billy Sims right around the corner. Obviously, there are perks to playing football at a program as prestigious as the University of Oklahoma. Uh, the university has had five Heisman Trophy winners uh, just outside on the east side of the stadium. You've got Heisman Park where there are statues uh, in, uh, commemorating all five Heisman Trophy winners. Um, but again, the, this is a part of success in football. This is not a, uh, an individual achievement as much as we make it out to be. These guys all played on, on fairly decent uh, football teams and they were great players. So this is again, a great room to be, a great thing to see. Um, but there's one more place I've got to go before we finish out the day, and that is I've actually got to go down on the turf and touch the grass on Owen Field. So let's go check that out. I'm standing in the tunnel uh, that the players come out before game time. Behind me is the locker room. Actually, I guess behind you. And behind me is the football field. And so what the players do is before the game starts, you, you roll the video, you see the players coming out of the locker room, then they come gather in this tunnel. Then right behind me over here, uh, in front of you is going to be the big inflatable Sooner. Uh, and then they, they come and they, they jump out of it. They touch the, the play like a champion today. And before you know it, they've taken the field in front of over 85,000 Oklahoma fans. Now, this is literally where the magic happens. The term Sooner Magic 
is uh, synonymous with OU football and uh, the greatness of Sooner football. But this is what Sooner fans see every Saturday. What a lot of people don't get to see is what we've already showed you, the film room, the weight room, uh, the rehab room, where everything uh, goes into place to make what happens on Saturday possible. So OU fans, I hope you've been able to enjoy this feature. Again, we want to thank the University of Oklahoma for giving us the opportunity to do this, and especially a thank you to Coach Merv Johnson for spending uh, the time with us and uh, kind of showing us around and explaining everything to us. For SBN's CrimsonandCreamMachine.com, I'm Matt Hofeld.